Okay guys, this is one of the most popular book in chess, logical chess, move by move. And we're gonna start with analyzing every single game in this book. Without wasting any time, let's start. So we're gonna start with e4. This is one of the best first moves because you're accomplishing few things. You're opening up path for your pieces to get out. And also you're putting a pawn in the center because in the center your pieces are strongest. Let's imagine that this knight is in this center square. It can go to eight different squares from there. And imagine if your knight is right here at the corner, that knight can go only to two squares. So that's why fighting for the center is pretty pretty important. Of course there are other first moves like d4 also accomplishes similar things and also c4 fighting for this center square. But if we are talking which central squares are the most important, they are these four, that's small center and a big center, but these four are crucial. Black plays e5, accomplishes really similar things as e4, so there's not much to comment here. White plays knight f3, attacking a pawn and also developing a piece, which is really good because you are doing two things at the same time. Also, there's a general rule that you should develop knights before bishops because bishops are already active on this diagonal and knights are not doing anything on the starting squares. And one additional reason is that you know that knight is going to go here to develop towards the center and not here or here to block the bishop. And then you can decide for the bishop what's the best square according to the situation in the future. Maybe it can go here, or here, or even here. Knight c6, defending this pawn, really good move. Some people would consider different moves here, maybe d6, but it blocks this bishop. Maybe queen e7, but also blocks this bishop. Maybe even queen f6, but you should not develop your queen too early because it can be chased around by minor pieces. These are minor pieces. For example, this bishop can go here and then attack your queen so you have to move it again. Maybe you would consider this move but it blocks this pawn so this bishop cannot develop here. So definitely knight c6 is the best move here. Bishop c4 putting a piece in the center attacking this critical f7 square. A lot of sacrifices happen on this f7 square. Bishop c5 doing the same thing. Also I want to mention the rule don't move the same piece twice. For example if white plays this maybe we can consider this move but we should actually develop other pieces instead of moving the same ones that are already developed c3 this is objectively not the best move we should move pieces in the opening instead of pawns now this knight cannot develop here but it is not so bad it tries to create really strong center and control a lot of squares in the center which is good so black plays queen e7 not allowing this move because after this move we take and then this, this pawn is going to be hanging. That's why white plays castle because now white is threatening this move because if we take, take and then we cannot really take this pawn because he's going to play rook here and we now queen. d6 making the center stronger and also making a path for this bishop to get out. d4 finally for white hoping that we're going to take. And then he's gonna build a really strong center. So here a really good rule to follow is to keep up the pressure because if we release the pressure by taking then he's gonna have a really good center. Instead we should keep up the pressure and move back. a4 he tries to trap this bishop but it is not really good because he should develop other pieces and not move random pawns around. a6 we have to do this because if we don't if we play some random move then he can push this pawn and if, if we take, he takes with the rook and then gives this final check. And if we take with the bishop, then d5 wins the bishop. a5, we move the bishop, we don't fall into the trap. h3, he was scared of this pin, but again he's moving pawns, not pieces, which is not good, and also creating weaknesses. h3 could be exploited later on. Some really good players said that you should, in general, keep your pawns intact in front of your kings because they are protection of your king and also you should have your knight here so you have really good protection of your king. Knight f6 developing a piece and attacking the pawn. He takes 
we take with the knight because we are putting a piece into the center attacking a lot of stuff here takes and again taking with a piece so this queen is in the center and it becomes really powerful now this pawn is attacked so he tries to protect it but because we played really good moves so far we are getting the chance to finish the game with some really nice combinations so bishop takes so takes queen check he cannot take because there's a pin goes here we take more material and we go with the knight forward threaten mate this is an attacking forcing move forcing moves are really good because they are as a word is saying, forcing an opponent to do something. He cannot just do some random things. He has to do what we tell him to do. So he has to defend here. Queen g3. King moves. And they can f2. If he takes, we have a fork. And other than that, there's a really big threat of queen h3. So he resigned here. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button and see you in the next one.